Lesson 53 is about unit multipliers and something called angular velocity. And on page 353 in your book, there are some unit multipliers written out. You might want to write some of those down in your formula book because you might need to refer back to those. Hopefully you've got most of those memorized. If you've been doing Saxon for one or two years, you've been working with unit multipliers a lot. And remember, those are just a ratio of equal values. They're different looking because their units are different. Like the one I have on the board there, 2.54 centimeters per inch. We could also write that one inch over 2.54 centimeters. One reason they're called unit multipliers is because there's units involved and then also because their value equals one. And we could just put like a big one through them. Now help us remember that they are equal to one. That's why we could multiply if we had six inches and we want to know how much that was in centimeters. We can multiply that by 2.54 centimeters over one inch and our inches units cancel there. And we just multiply six times 2.54 to get our centimeter value. In essence, we have multiplied six inches by one. Any number times one equals that number, right? So we haven't changed the value at all. We've just changed the units. The, the, and so the number has to change as well. If you have a ruler, you might want to get it out and just look at it. A lot of, a lot of rulers, they'll have an inch side and a centimeter side. And you should be able to look at the six inch mark and on opposite it there'll be centimeters and it'll be about 15.2 centimeters is where that six inch mark will line up. Six inches is the same thing as 15.24 centimeters. Unit multipliers are super important in mathematics and in engineering and science and different applications. As a scientist and an engineer, when I've been doing different types of work in that field, I don't think there's any other mathematical relationship I used more than unit multipliers. And it's interesting that some textbooks, some math textbooks, they don't really cover them very well. But John Saxon, he was an engineer. So he understands the value of unit multipliers and how important those are in everyday math operations. God has given us mathematics as a tool for studying his creation. And unit multipliers really help you a lot as you observe his world and see what work other people have done. Americans typically use English units and European countries use metric units. So there's lots of times when it's important that we be able to convert from one type of unit to the other. Let's apply what we know about unit multipliers to a study of angular velocity. That's in part B of this lesson. Well, actually, before we do part B, let's get a little bit more practice using unit multipliers, refresh our memory on how those work. I want you to convert 55 miles per hour to centimeters per minute. So if you remember, the first thing you do with a unit multiplier problem is write down the information that was given, 55. And it's best to write it like a fraction, 55 miles over one hour. That's the same thing as 55 miles per hour, right? And we want to convert this to centimeters per minute. When we have units in the numerator and denominator, what I like to do on these problems is just convert either the numerator first or the denominator first, and then convert the other part. So let's just convert hours to minutes first. And so in one hour, there are 60 minutes. And there's our unit multiplier or conversion factor that we need to convert hours to minutes. And we can cross out the hours units to help us see that we did that conversion correctly. Now let's go to miles, or from miles, to centimeters. And just think about it first before you start. You know that there's 5,280 feet in a mile. 
you know there's 12 inches in a foot and 2.54 centimeters in an inch. So we need three unit multipliers to make this conversion. And we'll say 5,280 feet. That needs to go on top because the miles need to go on bottom in order for miles to be canceled out. Now we need to cancel the feet. So we say 12 inches over one foot and those feet units cancel. Then lastly we'll say 2.54 centimeters over one inch and the inch units cancel. Now we could multiply everything out here to get a single numerical answer. But usually what they do in the Saxon book is just have you write out the factors. That way if, if your answer is just in the factors, if your parents or whoever is checking your work, they know that you, ha that you use the unit multiplier method to get the correct answer. So let's just write out our factors here. 55 times 5280 times 12 times 2.54 all over 60. We have 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 60. So it'd just be 60. And look, we have centimeters in the numerator, minutes in the denominator. Centimeters per minute. I mean, we could easily just multiply all that on our calculator to get a single numerical answer. But we'll just leave it like that. Here's another one. Let's convert 25 liters to cubic inches. Now, this one we're dealing with volumes. Remember what you do when you have cubed values or squared values? You have to multiply by the same unit multiplier a multiple number of times. We have 25 liters to cubic inches. Remember what we do is write down what's given first. 25 liters. And let's just think about it before we start trying to convert this. We could go liters to milliliters and hopefully you know that there are one or there is one cubic centimeter in one milliliter. So we can go from cubic centimeters or milliliters to cubic centimeters. That's a one to one conversion there. Those, the numerical values are equal, just the units are different. And then we can go from cubic centimeters to cubic inches. So let's go ahead and convert to milliliters first. 1,000 milliliters in one liter. And then let's do our one-to-one -one conversion here. It's called one cubic centimeter in one milliliter. And then finally, to convert to inches, we'll have one inch over 2.54 centimeters. Now, let's go ahead and cancel. We have liters over liters, milliliters over milliliters, cubic centimeters over just a centimeter there. So what we have to do is do that unit multiplier, one inch per 2.5 centimeter, 2.54 centimeters. We have to have that as a factor three times. So in other words, we need centimeter times centimeter times centimeter or cubic centimeters. Let's just put a cubed power there to the outside of the parentheses of that unit multiplier. And that's a simpler way of writing that unit multiplier three times. So now let's just multiply our numbers together and we'll have 25 times 1,000 and divide by 2.54 cubed. Now one thing we forgot to do was cancel our cubic centimeters. So we're left with inches cubed for the units. Multiplying by a unit multiplier is the same thing as multiplying by one. Because all conversion factors or unit multipliers, all of those are equal to one. They represent a ratio of equal quantities. But the numerical values are different usually 
because the units are different. Write down those unit multipliers on page 353. Write those down in your formula book. When we're converting from one unit to another, the rules that we need to do that and to follow the deductive reasoning process where we apply a rule, the rules that we need are the unit multipliers. Standards are basically the same thing as rules. And just think about it. Somewhere, somebody had to set up a standard for how, much, how many inches would be in a foot or how many centimeters are in an inch. At some point in time in history, somebody decided that 2.54 centimeters was the same thing as one inch. The Bible says that the Lord abhors dishonest scales and measures. So if somebody was using 5,200 for one mile instead of 5,280, they would be in error. It's important to know what these standards are and what these conversion factors are and to be able to use them correctly. We'll apply what we know about unit multipliers to the second part of this lesson now on angular velocity. And what that is, is you just have to think about a wheel. That would be a good example here. Think about this wheel rotating along the ground. If this wheel was on a car, it can only go as fast. We'll just say that it's going at a speed V in that direction. It can only go as fast as the point of the wheel where it touches the surface. Or in other words, where it's in contact with the road's surface. Now it just so happens that there's a formula that's related to the rotation rate of the tire and its radius r and that's equal to v is equal to r times omega where omega is the angular velocity and omega has different units we you might have heard of revolutions per second or revolutions per minute, maybe even degrees, because you know as you go around a circle, there's 360 degrees in a circle. So you can measure that rotation in degrees per second or even degrees per minute. And remember, radians, that's another unit for angle measure. So you could also have radians per second or radians per minute. Now, it's very important when you do angular velocity problems that your units for angular velocity are in radians per second or radians per minute. More appropriately, they need to be in radians per some unit of time. The numerator has to be in radians. So if you had revolutions per second, let's say you were going at 6 revolutions per second, you would need to use a unit multiplier and say, well, there are 2 pi radians in one revolution around a circle. Cancel those revolutions and you would have 12 pi radians per second. To figure out that tire's speed like we have up there in the picture, we'd have to do its radius, the tire's radius, times that rotation rate, that angular velocity in radians per unit of time. Maybe you're doing chemistry right now or you've already completed chemistry. In the Algebra 2, Saxon Algebra 2 book, they had some chemistry related problems and they're dealing with gases. And remember for those gases, those formulas that you used? the temperature had to be in units of kelvins for those formulas to work. It's kind of the same idea here. Our angular velocity, if we're trying to figure out a speed at, the, at a point on a tire or a wheel, some kind of circle, the angular velocity has to be in units of radians per second, or more appropriately, radians per some unit of time. So if you know the radius of some circular object and also the rotation rate, the rate that it's rotating at, 
you can figure out the speed at the edge of that object. That's what this arrow that I'm highlighting in red is. That's, that's the speed at the edge of the object. It would be the radius times the rotation rate. That will also be the speed of that wheel as it moves because the wheel can only move as fast as that outside edge where it's touching a surface, where it's in contact with a road or some other surface. Let's go ahead and do a practice problem now. Let's read this one. It says, a car whose tires are 34 inches in diameter is traveling at 60 miles per hour. What is the angular velocity of the tires in RPM or in revolutions per minute? Well, let's just think about this. We're dealing with angular velocity. Anytime you see a problem like that where there's an angular velocity involved or a rotation, think about your rule or your formula, V equals R omega. You should put that formula in your notebook, your spiral notebook that you're keeping that has all your rules and formulas and definitions in it. Think about the question that they're asking. What is the angular velocity? So they want to know what omega is. So we can rearrange that. Omega is equal to V over R. We have the speed is 60 miles per hour. We have the diameter is 34 inches. So the radius would be 17 inches. And we want to know the angular velocity in revolutions per minute. So we'll have to use some unit multipliers to simplify this problem or get it in the right units that we want. When you do these problems dealing with angular velocity, they'll want you to write your answer like a unit multiplier problem like we did in practice problem A and B where you have all the factors written out. So let's just go ahead and start working on this one. We'll have our speed of 60 miles per hour. Let's write that as a fraction, 60 miles over one hour. And then instead of saying divided by the radius, can't we just, isn't this the same thing, V times one over R? That's the same thing as V divided by R. So next we'll do one over 17 inches. Now, we want revolutions per minute. So let's get our units of minutes first here. And that means we need to cancel hours. One hour in 60 minutes. So those hours units cancel there. And we want to cancel the miles and the inches. Let's just convert inches to miles. So we'd say that there are 12 inches in one foot. And then there are 5,280 feet in one mile. So our feet units cancel, our inches units cancel, and our miles units cancel. So all we're left with is minutes in the denominator. Now listen closely. Here's the, one of the confusing parts about angular velocity. The units are actually radians per minute right now. We have radians per minute. It's just that radians is called a dimensionless unit. And that can be confusing. We just add it when we need it. We know that we just solved this for omega, right? because we did the linear speed, V, divided by the radius. When you solve a problem like this for the angular velocity, cancel all of the length units out, and you will end up with radians per minute. It's one of those things in the natural world. We, just don't, we don't really know why it works this way, but that's just how it works. You just can't forget that right now we really have radians per minute. What do we want though? We want revolutions per minute. So we need to cancel the radians. Let's just write radians right here so we know it's there. And then we will cancel that out. One revolution is equal to 2 pi 
radians. Now our radians cancel and let's just write this answer out. We'll have 60 times 12 times 5,280 all over 17 times 60 times 2 pi. We could even cancel those 60s just to simplify a little bit and we'll have 12 times 5280 over 17 times 2 pi RPM, revolutions per minute. Now, again, they don't want an exact numerical answer. I mean, you could do that very easily on your calculator, but that's not what they're looking for. They want to see that you did use unit multipliers to get to your answer. Working with the unit multipliers and being able to work use those is a whole lot more important than just knowing how to multiply something on your calculator. That's why they have the answers written as factors like that. And plus, if you do this on your calculator, you'll have to round it and you may round different than the book did so you don't get quite as exact of an answer as you do when you just leave it in the form of the factors. Let's do one more problem. Read it through first. A wheel of a bicycle has a radius of 13 inches and is revolving at 80 RPM. How fast is the bicycle moving in miles per hour? Let's just think about this. Here's our bicycle wheel. We want to know how fast it's moving. So if we know the speed at the edge of it, I mean, if it's rotating, if it's moving forward, it's going to be rotating in that direction there and this direction up here at the top. And as long as it's in good contact with the road, it's not slipping, then its speed will be equal to r times omega. So we can figure that out by multiplying the radius of 13 inches by that rotation rate that they gave us, 80 revolutions per minute. So let's just go ahead and do that. We'll just say V is equal to the radius of 13 inches times 80 revolutions in one minute. But we want to know how fast it's moving in miles per hour, so we need to do some conversion factors here, or unit multipliers, multiply by them to get the units in miles per hour. First though, remember, omega, the rotation rate, the angular velocity, that has to be in radians. The units in the numerator have to be in radians for it to work right, for you to actually get the speed correct. So let's do that as our very first unit multiplier. 2 pi radians in one minute or I'm sorry, in one revolution. So our revolutions will cancel out. And now let's go ahead and convert minutes to hours. In There will be 60 minutes in one hour. So we have our minute units canceled. And then we need to go from inches to miles, so we'll have one foot over 12 inches, and we'll have one mile over 5280 feet. And cancel where we can here, inches there and inches here feet and feet. And so our units in the numerator, we have radians and miles. Remember, radians, we just kind of forget about it now. And that's just, that's just a property of angular velocity when we're trying to find a speed using V equals R omega. Now we just kind of forget about it. In the last problem, we had to just add it in. Now we don't consider it anymore, and we see that we have our speed in miles per hour. So we just write out all the factors, 13 times 80, times 2 pi, times 60, over 12, times 5280, 
miles, we'll just say MPH, miles per hour. On these problems, make sure you write your answer in terms of all of the numerical factors. Use unit multipliers to get the correct answer. Be careful about that radian conversion. Omega, anytime you use that rotation rate, it always has to be in units of radians per unit time. Okay, well that's all for lesson 53.